Why is your bladder leaking? Well, I'm Dr. Rina Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm gonna to explain to you the different causes for bladder leakage or urinary incontinence. If you're new here, I make content every Monday and Friday on urologic conditions, bladder health, sexual health, and so much more. So if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and share this channel with your friends. I've got my little stuffed bladder and you can see here's your bladder here's the tubes that drain into the kidneys and here's your urethra or your bladder outlet so when you think of issues with bladder leakage you can think of problems with the bladder itself or problems with the outlet or the urethra or the muscles underneath the urethra. And so the two most common causes of leakage are stress urinary incontinence and urgency urinary incontinence. Urgency urinary incontinence affects the bladder right here. And this is due to unstable contractions of the bladder. How would you know that you have urgency urinary incontinence? It's because you have symptoms of gotta go, gotta go, can't make it, gotta rush to the bathroom, and sometimes you don't make it. Sometimes you wake up at night with a strong urge to pee and have to run to the bathroom. And sometimes people might say they don't even have time to think about it because the urine just leaks out. Stress urinary incontinence due to a weakness of the muscles underneath the urethra or the pelvic floor. So very often we see this in women who have had multiple vaginal deliveries, multiple pregnancies, and have gotten weakness of the muscles underneath the pelvic floor. So that when they do any activity that increases pressure on their bladder, like coughing, sneezing, exercising, even walking or sitting from standing, they will have leakage. We also see this in men who've had a prostatectomy because very often the sphincter muscle that holds urine in has weakened from the surgery itself and so they're no longer able to hold urine the way they used to. We also see this in people who've had prior surgeries in the past in this area and who have jobs where they stand for a long period of time um, or they are overweight. As far as urgency incontinence, we see this very commonly in people as they age. We also see it in patients who have neurologic conditions like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, spinal cord injury. And we also see it in people who have any sort of obstruction, like a large prostate in men or having had prior surgery for women, maybe with something like a sling that then blocks blocks the flow of urine out to the bladder, and this then causes the bladder to be overactive in response to this obstruction in the urethra. So if you can imagine, if this gets blocked, your bladder starts starting to squeeze really hard over and over again to try and get the urine out, and this can make you have this urgency, like you have to go, have to go, and sometimes causing leakage. Lastly, there's also overflow incontinence, and what is that? That's when urine flows into the bladder and you are unable to empty it. Most commonly, we see this in men with an enlarged prostate. We also see this in people who have neurologic conditions where they can't empty their bladder or if they have a weakened bladder muscle due to things like long-standing diabetes or having really many, many years of holding their bladder for a long period of time, the muscle can get weak over time, making it difficult to empty their bladder. So what happens is the bladder gets very, very full. At some point, it can't hold anymore and the urine leaks out. So when you come to the doctor, we're gonna ask you all sorts of different questions to find out when does your leak leakage happen? What causes it? Does it get worse at certain times or better? And if so, have you tried anything to make it better? In order to differentiate which type of incontinence you have, most often we can figure it out with your history alone, but sometimes we're not exactly sure. So there's two things we'll do. One is we'll get a bladder scan or a post void residual to make sure you're emptying your bladder well. Also, we'll get a urinalysis or a urine test to see if there's any signs of infection. Urinary tract infection can very often cause symptoms of increased leakage, urgency, and frequency, particularly if you were previously having normal bladder function with no problems at all. After that, we can then go down the pathway of treatment for either of these conditions. You can check out my videos on stress urinary incontinence or overactive bladder to learn more about treatment for each of these conditions. With overflow incontinence, we often have to figure out how to empty the bladder. That may mean with a catheter or teaching you how to catheterize yourself. Sometimes we do have other options like sacral neuromodulation, which is a bladder pacemaker that we can use for treatment of patients who are not blocked but have difficulty emptying their bladder. 
What if we can't tell what kind of leakage you have after all that? Sometimes we can then proceed to do a test called a urodynamics test. And what that test is, we put a small catheter in the bladder, a small catheter in the rectum, and we fill the bladder with fluid. We do this while you're awake so we can talk to you. We can learn when you feel an urge to urinate. We can also assess when you leak by asking you to either bear down or if we see an unstable bladder contraction on the study itself, we'll know that your bladder is having contractions without your brain telling it to. And lastly, during the study, we can also assess how you're emptying your bladder. Does your bladder mount a normal bladder squeeze in order to empty the bladder or not? Or is it blocked off in any way so that, so that the bladder cannot empty? Very often we'll find that people have mixed urinary incontinence, meaning they have stress incontinence and urgency incontinence. If that's the case, we'll often ask you what is bothering you most, and we'll talk about fixing that first. And essentially, like I said, there are two different pathways for treatment for both of these conditions. So we'll talk to you about both of them and likely focus on the one that's bothering you most. I hope you found this helpful. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it. <laughs>